Section 8.5, similarity. If b and b prime are bases for a finite dimensional vector space v, and if i from v to v is the identity operator in v, then p b from b prime to b to b prime, the transition matrix from b to b prime, is equal to i b prime b, and p b prime b is equal to i b b prime. So what we're essentially saying is that these transition matrices that we first talked about in section 4.7 and we built them from the uh, basis vectors for the basis they start from in term relative to the basis uh, vectors that they end up with. So that means that the first column for P was given as the U1 basis vector for B relative to B prime. The second column was U1, or sorry, U2 that second basis vector for b relative to b prime, and so on through un relative to b prime. So each of uh, these was the columns that built up p, and similarly for, uh, this was for p b, prim, b b prime, and then p b prime b was built out of u1 prime, because we're starting with b prime, relative to b, u2 prime, relative to b, and so on, through un prime, relative to b. So these transition matrices are really the same as identity operators on these different two different bases. So let's prove this. Suppose that b is the basis u1 through un, b prime is the basis u1 prime through un prime, the basis for v. Let's use the fact that the identity operator applied to v is equal to v for all vectors v and v. So it follows that i b prime b is defined as i u1 u1 b prime, i u2 b prime, and so on through i un b prime. Well, i applied to u1 is just u1, so it's just u1 b prime, u2 b prime, and so on which is by definition p b b prime. And the proof for p b prime b is similar. Let's take that and combine it with our next theorem, that if t from v to v is a linear operator on a finite dimensional vector space v, and b and b prime are bases for v, then t b prime is equal to p inverse t b p where the p and p inverse are as given above. So essentially we're saying that, remember these p's can be thought of as identity operators by the previous theorem. So this tb prime will be the same as tb, so we'll have two linear operators that are the same, essentially if and only if they can be uh, conjugated, if and only if they're similar in the sense that you can write p inverse tb p. So that brings us to our next theorem. If V is a finite dimensional vector space, then two matrices A and B represent the same linear operator, but possibly with respect to different bases, if and only if they are similar. Moreover, if B equals P inverse AP, then P is the transition matrix from the bases used for B to the bases used for A. Let's do an example of this. How about we show that these matrices C and D represent the same linear operator, where C is the matrix relative to the basis B, given by the standard basis E1, E2, and D is the matrix relative to the basis B prime, given by these vectors, which are not standard. So notice that C and D look a lot different, but D is much easier to work with because it's diagonal. It tells you exactly what's going on, whereas C is a little bit more obscure what's going on. So it's nicer to work with D, even though C is our more standard matrix operator because it's relative to the standard basis. So sometimes having a more complicated basis can give you a more easy representation of the same linear operator. After we show that they're the same, we'll verify that they're actually similar by finding the matrix P that makes them similar. So how about we start by writing out C as, so it's one, one, minus two, four, and that'll be our TB. So let's see what happens when we take T and apply it to U1 prime, one of the 
new basis vectors. So then we would take 1, 1, minus 2, 4, and we would multiply that on the left by, uh, well, it would be multiplied on the left. So by, uh, so we have 1, 1, that's u1 prime. I'm taking 1, 1 and multiplying it on the left by tb. That's a better way of saying it. Okay, th so that equals 2, 2. And we can write that as a linear combination of these basis vectors as, well, it doesn't, you don't have to use any u2 prime. You could just take 2 times u1 prime. So we'll write that as 2 times u1 prime. And let's similarly look at what happens when we take t and apply it to u2 prime. So it's taking 1, 1, minus 2, 4, and multiplying by u2 prime, which is 1, 2. And we get 3, 6. And notice that's 3 times u2 prime. So we have t u1 prime b prime is 2 of the u1 primes and 0 of the u2 primes. So that's 2, 0. If we express t u1 prime in terms of the basis for b prime, the basis b prime. And let's do the same thing for u2 prime. So t u2 prime relative to b prime is 0 of the u1s and 3 of the u2s, so it's 0, 3. So that means that our transition matrix t b prime is equal to t u1 prime b prime is the first column t u2 prime b prime as the second column and I'll just pull out the 2 0 for first column and the 0 3 that we just got for the second column and that is our matrix D cool so we did get the uh, exact same operator from both C and D. Now let's find the matrix P that makes them similar. So what I'll do is I'll write u1 prime in terms of the original basis vectors. So the original ones were e1 and e2. So that's 1, 0 is e1 and 0, 1 is e2. Those are standard. So I just need to take the 1 from 1, 0 and add that to the 0, 1 from e2, and that'll give me u1 prime. So it's just e1 plus e2. Okay, how about u2 prime? Well, I have to get a 1 over here, so I'll take e1, that'll be 1, 0, and then I'll need 2 in the second component, so I'll take uh, 2 e2s. Okay, so that implies that u1 prime b is 1, 1, and that u2 prime b is 1, 2, just by reading off the coefficients for each one. So we took u1 prime and u2 prime, and we express them relative to the original basis b. So that means that our matrix p is equal to p b prime b. That'll be u1 prime b, u2 prime b, and I'll just pull off these as the columns. So that's 1, 1, and 1, 2. So that gives us P inverse then as 
as well, just to swap and make negative and divide by the determinant, you get two, one, minus one, minus one. Okay, so we have D as two, zero, zero, three. That's our diagonal matrix that can be expressed as two minus one, minus one, one. That's P inverse multiplied by C, our matrix for a standard basis, multiplied by P, one, 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 two. So the matrices C and D actually are similar. We define the determinant of the linear operator T to be determinant of TB, where B is any basis for V. So it doesn't matter which basis when defining our determinant. We have an entire table of similarity and variance. Determinant doesn't change when you have similar matrices. Invertibility doesn't change. You still have your TB invertible if and only if P inverse TBP is invertible. Rank doesn't change, nullity doesn't change, trace doesn't change, characteristic polynomial doesn't change, eigenvalues don't change, and eigenspace dimension doesn't change. If lambda is any eigenvalue of TB and P inverse TB, P, then the eigenspace of TB corresponding to lambda and the eigenspace of P inverse TBP corresponding to lambda have the same dimension. As an example, how about we find determinant T and determinant of B, T, B prime for these two matrices right over here that are similar as we just saw. Well, determinant of T is just the determinant of 1, 1, minus 2, 4, and that's 6, right? 4, and then minus minus 2 is 6. Determinant for T relative to B prime is also easy to calculate. You can immediately see that that's also going to be 6, because it'll just subtract 0. Oops, wrong notation. And just an example that shows you that the term doesn't change. Not proof, but you know, it's consistent. As a last example, let's find the eigenvalues of the linear operator t from p2 to p2, defined by t of a plus bx plus cx squared equals minus 2c plus a plus 2b plus cx plus a plus 3c x squared. So we'll write our basis b, standard basis for p2 is 1x x squared. And we'll write tb as, let's see, we have 0a, 0b, and minus 2c, so 0, 0, minus 2. Then we have 1, 2, and 1, 1, 2, and 1, and then it sends, let's see, we have 1, 0, b, 3c, so 1, 0, 3. Okay, so that's our transition matrix. Let's now find the eigenvalues. We'll take the determinant of lambda i minus tb, so lambda minus 0 is lambda, lambda minus 2, lambda minus 2, and then lambda minus 3 along the diagonal, and all the other ones we just make negative. So 0, negative, negative 2 is 2, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, 0. Okay, and this will give us lambda times, actually, I'll put lambda outside, I'll put the next one in parentheses, lambda times lambda minus 2 times lambda minus 3, right? Because I'm just taking uh, lambda times this determinant right over here, and then 0 times this determinant, and then I need 2, so plus 2 times this determinant, which is just lambda minus 2. And expanding that out, we get lambda cubed minus 5 lambda squared plus 8 lambda 
minus 4, which factors as lambda minus 1 times lambda squared minus 4 lambda plus 4. That's not super easy to see. The way that you could do it is by testing roots using the rational root theorem. You'll notice that uh, 1 is actually a root because if you take lambda minus 1 and you do the long division, so we have lambda cubed minus 5 lambda squared plus 8 lambda minus 4. You fit lambda inside lambda cubed and you get lambda squared and then you multiply, you get lambda cubed minus lambda squared, subtract, you get minus 4 lambda squared, bring down the 8 lambda, and then divide again, you get minus 4 lambda, multiply, so you have minus 4 lambda squared, plus 4 lambda, subtract, and you get 4 lambda, bring down the minus 4, and it goes in evenly exactly 4. So that's where you can get that. In any case, that implies that our uh, polynomial continues to factor as lambda minus 1 times lambda minus 2 squared, because this is easy to factor. We'll set that equal to 0, and we see that lambda equals 1 and lambda equals 2 are eigenvalues, just as we saw in example sec 7 of section 5.1.